Let's show you how to set up a perfect environment for machine learning or any type of programming in general. Now this involves tools, applications and extensions, also some secrets which most of the people ignore and it makes their experience very miserable. Now with that said, let's get into it. I'm going to initially start out by creating a new folder. I'm just going to call this environment. And this is where I will store in all of my tools and applications. First, I'm going to start off by showing you how to install multiple different versions of Python. And this is just very, very simple. You would just go to the Python website and then click on the downloads tab. Over there, it will show you all of the different Python versions that is available. You will click on the one that you will need. And that will take you to our desired window where you will scroll down and then click on the desired installer. Now this will download the installer and once that is done you will open it up to set it up now notice i've already installed 3.11.8 and this will be 3.12.2 now one major thing that you have to keep in mind is to make sure that you have the add python.exe to part checked this will make sure that you can use pip command in command prompt otherwise it's going to show you something like pip is not recognized so make sure you have this checked and then click on install and then after the installing is done, what you have to do is just go to your command prompt and type in pip to see if it gives you a list of command. And if it does, that means that pip is recognized and pip is set up and you're good to install all of the packages inside of Python. But then if it shows pip is not recognized, then that means that you have not added Python to part and you have to do it manually. Also to check the Python version, you can just type in Python iPhone iPhone version and this will show you the exact Python version. I notice I have two Python versions installed in the default path. You can check this as well. All right, the next thing is going to be Anaconda. This is a package manager, which will allow us to create multiple different virtual environments with multiple different versions of Python. I will show you how to work with Anaconda at the end of the video by showing you a demonstration of all the tools. But for now, install Anaconda itself. What you have to do is just type in Anaconda distribution and then click on the first link to download it. And this will download the installer once again, which you will have to again use it for setting up. So once the installer is installed, you can click on open file, and then this will open up the setup installer itself. And over here as well, one important thing, actually, before we get there, I'm going to create a new folder inside of the environment directory that we created, and I'm going to call this Anaconda. Over here, click on new, and then I'll name this to be Anaconda. Now notice I have four Python version folders, which I will end up deleting because I already have it on the default part. But then for Anaconda, this will be my path. I'm just going to click on the environment directory and then click on Anaconda to store all the Anaconda information. All right. Now, after that is done, you would click on next. And over here, again, you will have to keep in mind that you have to click the add Anaconda tree to my path environment variable, which is again, very important to use Anaconda commands. Now, I know that this shows that it is not recommended, but I guarantee you for 99% of the people, this is actually required. And the others, you can just leave it as it is and click on install. And this will be installing the package. And then once that is done, it's going to take you to the finished setup window where if you have checked launch Anaconda Navigator, it's going to open up the Anaconda Navigator for you where you can see all of the tools that is available. Again, I will show you how to work with Anaconda at the end of the video. But then if you want to work with or if you want to have a look at what are the things that is available, then you can scroll through and look at the Anaconda Navigator. Up next is going to be VS Code. This will be our code editor for writing code. Again, it's fairly simple to install. You just go to VS Code website and then first download the installer. Just click on download. And that's going to end up downloading the installer itself. And then while this is happening, I'm just going to go ahead and create another new folder inside of our environments. And I'm just going to call this VS Code. And this will hold all of the information about VS Code. And once that is done, for VS Code, you don't need to actually disturb any of the setup defaults. You can just have it as it is, and then you can click on next, 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 and click install. It's going to show you a confirmation window, and there you can press install. All right, that's going to install VS Code itself. And once that is done, it's going to directly open up VS Code for you, which kind of looks like this. Now over here, I'm going to start off by installing all of the extensions inside of VS Code. And to open up the extensions tab, all you have to do is click on the three dots and over there it's going to show you the extensions icon and if you click on it the extensions tab will be opened i'm going to first start off by installing python which comes with pylance the autocomplete recommendation and then after which i will also be installing jupyter notebook which again in my case is going to be very important because i work with sales a lot after which what i will be doing is installing an autocomplete ai which is called as tab 9 this AI will be responsible for my autocomplete and it has also got a chatbot where you can ask for it to write code as well. Now, this is not a direct process. After you install it, it's going to ask for you to sign up, which 
actually takes in just two or three minutes. And once you've done that, it's going to take you to the welcome page where you can see how to work with tab nine. Again, if you don't understand that, I will be showing you how it works at the end of the video while I'm demonstrating. Once that is done, I'm also going to install Git Lens. This will be responsible for my version control. And the way I'm going to do this is by installing Git as a app itself. I'll show you how it works. Version control is just basically controlling how many versions of the same file would you wish to have. Again, I will explain that when we get to Git. Just make sure you install this extension. But all right, that's going to take you to welcome to Git Lens page, which again, you can casually ignore because I will be showing you how to work with Git after we download that one. All right, after this, I'm going to install black formatter for Python. And then this will give the exact color format for our code. So make sure to install this one as well. And then I will also be installing auto doc string for Python. This will help you generate doc strings for all of the functions that you're going to write. Again, I will show you how this works as well. And then finally, I'm also going to install Plotly Express Snippets. This is kind of optional. This helped me with data visualizations whenever I'm working on a data science project. So I'm going to install this one as well. And I guess that's about it for the extensions. Now next is going to be Git itself. And this is responsible for version control. And what I mean by version control is, let's say you have created a code file and wrote some code on it. Then you click on save, and this will be the initial version of the file. Later, if you make some changes to the code, and that will be the second version of the file. Now, Git will allow you to work with these two versions all together in the name of version control, where you can save all the different versions of file, and you can access it at any time as you wish. So I'm going to install this one as well, and I will show you how this works when we get to the demonstration. All right, as always, just go to the Git website and then click on download. This is going to download the installer itself. And the install setup is quite big for this one, but most probably you just want to leave it as it is, except a few cases, which I will show you once you click on the open setup window. First, I will end up creating a new folder. I'm just going to call this Git, and this will fold all of the Git information, just like we did for the before ones. This is going to have this. And then when you get to this page, you want to make sure that you click on use Visual Studio Code as Git's default editor. By default, it's going to have as BIM, which is not what we desire to have. We're just going to use Visual Studio Code as Git's default editor. So we're going to select that. And then you also have to make sure that when you get to the configuring the terminal emulator, you have to choose use min tty. This will make things easier when you use Git itself. So you want to select the option use min tty. And then the rest, you want to leave it as it is and come to the page and click on install. And once the installation is done, the setup is officially complete. Now it's time for us to show you how all of these things work. Let's say I come to VS Code and then I create a new sample workspace folder. Again, this will be inside of the environment directory that we created. But then inside that, just know that I've created a sample workspace and then I've opened that through VS Code. That's going to show you the welcome message. Now over here, I'm just going to type in um, a new file. Let's say I actually need to first show you. Um, let's just type in a requirements.txt. This will be a txt file over here. Let's say that I want to install a few modules. And I'm going to type in numpy, pandas, and matplotlib. And let's say I want to install all of these three modules onto my virtual environment, which again, we haven't created just yet. So to do that, let me just again create a new file and type in main.py. And I'm also going to create a Jupyter notebook. Let me call this sample.ipynd. This will create a Jupyter notebook, which contains all the cells and markdown. What I'm going to do here is first open up the terminal. And over here, what you got to do is click over here because it's going to by default be selected as PowerShell. So I'm going to first open command prompt. We don't need this. So over here in command prompt, what I'm going to do first actually go ahead and type in conda create hyphen n and then give our virtual environment a name. Again, notice that we're using conda over here. Let's call this my env. And then you also have to mention Python version, which will be 3.1.0. All right. Now this will create a new virtual environment with a Python version 3.10. All right. Now it's going to ask for confirmation. Just press Y, which signifies yes, which will install all of the packages. Again, it shows the progress bar over here. It is installing Python 3.10.0. All right, now it has created the my env environment and here it gives us a few suggestions. To activate this environment, you will have to type in this command. So I'm just copying that and pasting it over here. And when you do this, you should see my env like this over here before you look at the path itself. And if you want to deactivate it, then what you have to do is just copy this and paste the statement that is conda deactivate. This will deactivate the my env environment. So 
Again, I'm just going to activate it once again. So what I will do is type in conda activate and then the environment name, which is my env. Now inside of this environment, what I'm going to do is go ahead and install these three packages. So what I do here is type in pip install hyphen r. Actually, before doing that, I just want to first show you the Python version. It should show you Python 3.10.0 because notice that the base version is going to be Python 3.11. Again, I will show you that in a second. But first, make sure to save this file. And what you have to do now is type in pip install hyphen r requirements dot txt. Uh, this is going to install all the three modules. And then once this is done, now our environment will have pandas, numpy, and matplotlib, which we can use whenever we need. So in order to activate or use this environment inside of our code file, what we have to do is select that as an interpreter. To do this, what I'm going to do is actually go to the main.py file whilst this is happening. I want you to notice here that the base Python version that it has selected by default is going to be PyCon 3.9.7, but then we're going to change it to the exact environment that we created. So what I'm going to do here is actually go ahead. We will, I guess we will have to restart VS code to make sure that the interpreter is recognizing the environment that we created. All right, notice that here. You just have to press refresh and then you'll see that my env is popping up. Now if you click on this, this is going to be our interpreter for this main.py file, which has got pandas numpy and All right, now the packages are installed. Now I've gone on over here and then clicked on the three dots and Right now it's not available, but you should be seeing something as tab 9 AI. And then that will actually pop up the tab 9 AI chat where you can ask questions or anything about the code related ones. But then that's not what we've done the tab 9 for. What I'm going to do over here is just type in import pandas as, and notice that it is giving me the autocomplete option. This is fairly, very useful. Again, you see that we are getting a recommendation of creating a main file, but not what I'm going to do. I'm also going to import NumPy as NP, and look at that. We get the autocomplete recommendation. I just press tab, and then the recommended text comes into the code itself. Let's just go ahead and type in import matplotlib.pyplot as PMC, just like that. And notice how the tab 9 is again giving us a machine learning related recommendation. Again, you can press tab to accept it, and then it shows you all of the other options available as well. Now, let's get to git itself. What we have to do over here, again, create a new terminal. Just gonna call this, just gonna open the git bash terminal. Now over here, what you have to do is first type in git init, and this will initialize an empty repository. And this is called as master. Now, before you initialize this, for me, it works perfectly. But then for you, it's gonna ask you to actually initialize the setup, and then it's gonna ask you for setting up the initials, like your name and the email address. And to set up this, I'm going to pop up a screenshot of a list of commands, which you can use for Git. And inside that, you will have to make sure that you're given the name and the email address using the exact command. Now, once that is done, you will be initialized with Git. And what you can do is actually first type in Git add period. And what we have done here is we've created three new files and then modified two of them. So now when you type in Git add, period, this is going to add all of this to a staging area where we can see what other changes that we made. Again, let me just type in and show you git status. This shows that we have created three new files and then we have modified two of them, which it doesn't show for the time being because we have also created this one as well. So what you can do is let's say you are modifying here something as well. Let's just type in, actually, I'm just do this and then click on the my env environment. Now this is going to again, connect to the terminal. And then as you click on the my env as your kernel, what it will ask you to do is install the IPY kernel package, which is again required for using it on the Jupyter Notebook. So what you have to do is click on install, and then this will go on ahead and install the IPY kernel. So now our environment has got IPY kernel and then pandas numpy and matplotlib. So that's how it works. That's how we can work with Conda to create multiple different environments. And then that's how we use Git to save multiple different versions of the file. Again, I haven't shown you how to have commits, which I'm just going to show you right now after the IPY kernel is installed. After the installation is done, it's going to show you the word that you typed in and set as a string. Now we have made changes to all three of these files. Now, again, let me just type in git add period. Now it's going to add all of the three files that we modified. What I'm going to do here is actually again, type in git status, and this should show us three files, which we haven't added to commit yet. So what I'm going to do is type in git commit. 
Actually, I guess it's waiting for our editor to close the file. Let me just close it and then now type in. Oops, I forgot to actually give it a name. What I got to be doing here is actually let's just open all three of those once again. All right, we have all three of those opened. No, I'm going to type in git status. We have to have three files to be saved. So what I'm going to do is git commit hyphen m initial changes. Now this is going to create a commit which has the initial modified version of the three files. Now later if I modify the files again, then this will modify the files later. Now git lens allows you to see when you have added new lines and when you haven't and when you saved it. All right. That is the purpose of git lens extension installed onto VS code. And then since the initial changes has been given a code, you can later use that to access the previous version of the file. And that's about how to use git lens. And we have also shown you how to use tab nine as well. What did I miss? Okay. Let me just show you how to use the doc string as well. Let me just close this. What I'm going to do here is type in define, let's say main again, tab nine is giving it its recommendations. Let's just type in, actually, let's do all of this. Perfect. And what I'm going to do here, notice how git lens is showing us that we have edited this file six minutes ago, and then we don't have it committed. So what I'm going to do here is type in control shift two. This will create a doc string summary for us. But then right now there is nothing that we have done here inside this mail file. So it is not giving us a proper doc string. Once we have all of this set up and we have written proper code, doc string is going to give us a perfect doc string for the file, which is better understandable, right? And you can also use tab nine AI. Again, let me just open it. And you can actually ask for it to give us doc string for the function that it's looking at. All right, so that's about it. That's about a cumulative way of how to use all of the tools that you've just installed. And this, according to me, is the perfect setup for any programming type. And again, I am more interested towards machine learning. So all of my workings is going to be related to that. But then if you weren't on something else, like let's say web development, then you would just have to make minor tweaks to the setup that I showed you. But then if you're also working on machine learning, then you can just exactly follow this setup. And if you have any problems, I recommend you to watch this video from Veritas. And that's about it.